Yesterday was a whirlwind. The Pinterest insider Eric Cochran threw a stone at Goliath, and in return, the Goliath family big tech struck back. Early in the morning, we learned that the Project Veritas Twitter account was suspended for violating their privacy policy. Again, let's take a look at this. We've temporarily limited some of your account features. What did they suspend us for? It was this tweet about Ben Shapiro being called a white supremacist on Pinterest's private Slack channel. And it wasn't just them calling him a white supremacist. These employees added Shapiro to the sensitive terms list. It was a Slack message. White supremacist Ben Shapiro is not. And in our report, which was pulled by YouTube, more on that later, we explained three days after this happened that this, they, the company took action on this, essentially censoring commentary. This was and is newsworthy information. We didn't publish personal addresses, phone numbers of these Pinterest executives, or any other private material irresponsibly, just a name, a face, and what happened that the public had a right to know. It's called that investigative journalism thingy that uh, newspapers are supposed to do. Twitter should not be making news decisions on behalf of us or any journalist because they claim to be an open platform encouraging free speech. Instead, what they've done is to play the role of an almighty news editor. Now things just get started now. Later that evening, we noticed that the original 20-minute YouTube video linked by the Drudge Report directly was taken down. The reason, get this, a quote, privacy complaint. We get this screenshot on YouTube that says video unavailable. The video is no longer available due to a privacy claim. We get this email from YouTube that says, upon our analysis of the claim, we have removed the content in question. And then we get another email from the YouTube support team giving us timestamps of the video. So the content in question is from 3.40 to 4.07. Let's watch the 27 seconds that YouTube has a problem with. Explain the bottom right half of the, the page here. It's, it, there's an author name and then a commit comment. It says, mem add live action additional comment health. What does that mean? Mem is the username internal in Pinterest for Megan. And then this is the commit message when she actually added live action to the porn domain block list. When did they start targeting live action? This commit that added liveaction.org to the porn list was in February of 2019. Okay, there it is. That's the 27 seconds. The actual, what might be considered the smoking gun of the story where the individual inside Pinterest actually added the pro-life group live action to the porn domain blacklist. Again, this is legitimately newsworthy information without which there may not be the story that it is. We aren't doxing anybody. We're reporting facts that the public has a right to know. I mean, we're getting beyond the George Orwell analogy and we're, this is becoming Kafka-esque. They want us to censor or blur the very thing that proves that the people inside the company took the action that makes it newsworthy. Now, we could complain that Silicon Valley would never do this to the New York Times or CBS News, or we could complain that the Daily Beast or CNN get away with doxing private citizens, but that's not what we're going to do. What we're going to do is keep exposing the media and technology companies with your help. This week our insider Eric did something extraordinary. He took a risk for a cause he believes in. He lost his job for principles to draw other people like him to come out and go on camera. That's why he did that. That's what he wants to have happen next. And if any of you are like him and work in Google, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Reddit, or any other organization like that, we would love to hear from you and kick off another firestorm. Be brave. Go to projectveritas.com brave and send us an encrypted and confidential note.